All right. Okay, good. We're working. So, hey everyone. So, I apologize for this one taking a while. I have been gone. In fact, I have been traveling. So, I'm actually, I'm now living in Singapore. Yes, I mentioned this a while ago, but now it's happened. And so, I arrived uh, yesterday and still kind of getting used to it. I am living in an old British um, barracks bunker thing. I can like show it to you. It has, well, it looks kind of normal. So like this is kind of the place. And, you know, it has like little things on the walls. Uh, I'm actually kind of living in a jungle. So, well, I mean, it, it has jungle sounds, at least. Singapore itself is non-jungle-like, but uh, I'm living in kind of a, um, a suburbsy area that's jungly. But, uh, yeah, uh, we can talk about why that is, uh, but, uh, but basically the idea is to do um, a startup, startup ethics, fix and uh, that would be a nice place to do it, because it's like, um, it's in Asia, but, you know, they speak English, and I, you know, and English is like, not threatening, so, you know, I suppose like, to China or something. So, okay, so let's go through uh, these, these commentaries. So I just finished watching the episode about, like, what, 10 minutes ago? So it's all pretty fresh, and let's just kind of go through it. So I finally see what the Horcruxes now. I was curious how the Horcruxes were chosen. Uh, so it looks like they're chosen by um, picking something from the nerd off. I like that. That's nice. That's nice. So, okay. So before, uh, someone mentioned, oh, sorry, in between the episodes, a commentator said how they could see Colby being a more Zen version of Zack. I could see that. I can see it now. I mean, you know, and this is regardless of what happens in, in this episode. So I can kind of see that. I mean, I don't know. So what, so after the end of the previous episode, I don't know, Colby got like super serious face, something like that. And I could imagine if, uh, if he was like a less dignified person, um, that could like, Totally go wrong, go the wrong places, but you know, but he's a very dignified man. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that. So okay, so let's go through it. I like that Jonathan wants to be sent in. That shows a lot of honor. I like it. I remember when, what was it? There were some episodes like this. I remember in season one. I wanted, uh, what was? It? I wanted Genevieve to go in versus Olana. And Jenny didn't want to go in, and I tried to convince her that um, that this was a comic book challenge, and she would most likely win. And but you know she was she was skittish, uh, and and I said, um, but yeah, regardless. And uh, but anyway, so I like how how um, so it reminds me a little bit of of Moo in this case. So Moo in season one, she wanted to go in, and I mean she ended up losing, which was ironic. Um, and, uh, but yeah, yeah, so, so Jonathan has, has a good sense of honor. I like that. But also, also kind of, kind of, um, pragmatic. I mean, so, I mean, so he desires to go in, but he's just like, no, I'm not going to go up to Colby against, like, this thing I know nothing about. I mean, that's just, I mean, honor aside, that's just foolish. Uh, I don't think it was a bad thing that he didn't go in. Uh, I think, I think if the thing was even remotely related to his interest, then, I mean, he would have gone in and that would have been fine. So, okay. So at the very beginning of the episode, there's like so much Colby, and but so much explaining that Colby is a person. And uh, I mean, when I saw it, I was like, oh, Colby's gone. I mean, it's so clear you're gone. When they start doing in-depth things, like it's clear you're dead. So I like, we'll go in a second. Uh, I like the Hearthstone pillow that was in, that they had in the little the little room. So, I, and I guess in the, we're, yeah, they were like, like, I think, like, Rochelle or something was talking to Colby, and, like, she was like, oh, Hearthstone Pillow. It's like, oh, I know that logo. Yeah, so I liked that. Okay. I love the Murder Mystery Challenge. I thought that was extremely innovative and just, I mean, I don't know, it was really nice. Like, so they proposed one to a hacker challenge or something like that. And honestly, I had difficulty trying to find a way to make it, like, interesting to watch. Like, you know, because most of it's, like, just... You know, you're just kind of typing, you know, and I'm just not really, there are some ways you, you could hypothetically do this, but, um, but yeah, yeah, anyway. So, so but anyway, I, I, thought, I thought it was a wonderful challenge, it was unique, and it was well pulled off, so that was nice. Uh, 
I would have liked it if they had someone other than Pump, Pump Kitty die. Because, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's kind of boring. I mean, like, when I have, like, I mean, so, I mean, don't even love Mindy, I love you, and, you know, and I still love following your Facebook pictures and things like that. But that said, I think they could have been a little more original. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, why can they have, like, George, George, George Takai die, or have, you know, have anyone die? Have, who could they have die? I mean, just have arbitrary celebrity, have arbitrary celebrity die, and, 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 you know, and that, and that would have been really nice. I mean, why can you have Pin Gillette die? That, I mean, that would have been nice. You know, whatever. Um, have, you know, Neil, Neil, Neil Patrick Harris die. But yeah, whatever. I mean, I guess they had to fill in the slot, so they used Pumpkin Kitty. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> I like the line, I'll take blood spatter. I used to watch a lot of Dexter, so I already know it. <laughs> Um, I, I like I, I, I like it when King the Nerd show when it laughs a little bit at the characters. I mean, in, in, including me. Like there, there are several lines like you know where you're like clearly being mocked, <laughs> and I don't know. I like it. I like it. It's 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 funny. Um, people people sometimes ask uh, if they should do King of the Nerds and or they should apply, and I say, oh, if you're comfortable with like. You know, like 75% laughing with you and like 25% laughing at you. Like, if you're happy with that, go. You know, and they, and they, and they, and they decide. I mean, I personally am comfortable with that. I'm comfortable 25% of the time laughing at my, I mean, like, the joke, me being the butt of the joke. So, okay. So here was something. So in the team challenge, they had it four versus three. I'm surprised they didn't make one of them sit out. I mean, because, you know, before, that's usually how it's done. It seems like an unfair advantage to me. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the challenge was set up. My first impression, it seems like an unfair advantage. Because, you know, you can, like, diversify labor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Caitlin, as usual, has wonderful lines. I mean, Caitlin's witty. Caitlin has a lot of wit. Uh, I, I, I like it. Like, so, in this case, Caitlin's line was, um, um, I wasn't busy enough, but I got an A in the course, of course. <laughs> it's just, like, my, uh, Caitlin's, um, is it arrogance? It's a little bit of arrogance. Yeah, no, no, I would say Caitlin's a little arrogant. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean, I mean, I'm kind of arrogant, too, so, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. And Caitlin just has wonderful lines, and this is, this is no exception. When it's revealed that Pom Pom Kitty uh, uh, murdered herself, she needs to be charged with, with wasting police resources. That's a very serious business. And this is like calling, you know, I mean, a whole police investigation was, was, was brought on for this, for her antics. For the prize, I was surprised it wasn't an I, an I robot Roomba. One of my friends recently joined I, I robot, and so I don't know. Uh, I, I have, well, I had. Back in Los Angeles, I had an I, I robot room, but I really liked it. I hadn't heard of this other brand, but you know, you know whatever. I was um, I was concerned that these that the other robots may not be very good because I, I had been told that uh, I robot like patented up the whole space, and so, but you know, we'll see. Maybe do something else. Lily's prediction predicting of classic horror was phenomenal. She's done several good predictions now. She predicted, uh, what was it? The dressing, Yaya Han. She read Yaya Han's outfit and she predicted this. Lily has some nice insights. I, I'm not sure how she does it, but I don't know, she seems to be decent at, at predicting the future. Maybe she should start playing the stock market or start playing, I don't know, predicting, maybe she should predict like when characters will die in survival. I mean, in um, the TV show Survivor or something like that. Just. I don't know, this seems to be a trend. I, <laughs> Lily seems to have a, an eye for some of these things. So, you know, congratulations. But it was, it, it was great. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a great pickup. Uh, I, I thought the prediction was nice because, I mean, you do know the nerd offs do kind of tie into it. And the fact that they mixed in kind of horror characters doesn't make a lot of sense with, like, that murder mystery thing. Like, if they were just going to do regular murder mystery, they would just have, oh, the, the chainsaw person. I guess that's still technically horror, but um, I mean, I don't know, they, they, they wouldn't be like werewolves and they wouldn't be like vampires and stuff like that. So, I don't know, I mean, it was, it, it's, it's a very, um, in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense, but even just to, to, to think about it, that was, that, that's, that's very good. Go Lily. 
So, okay. <laughs> Amanda says, beating Colby would be one of the proudest moments of my life, and I've gotten married and had kids. <laughs> That's great. All right. So, uh, Colby's closing to the third nerd off. Wonderful. I love that Curtis joked about the contents of the nerd off. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, because he was just like, oh, it's just an apply math max. <laughs> he was like, this is the throne room. <laughs> uh, actually, I remember this. Actually, I don't know. So, I remember when I was in season one. They were very curious. Like, they wanted the throne to have this aura of ambiance, like this aura of respect, something like that. And they said, so Virgil, you know, how do you feel when you're in the throne room? And I'm like, well, the throne room is that kind of big room kind of in between the kitchen and the playroom. And, you know, and you kind of got to go through there. But, you know, but how do you feel when you're in it? It's like, about the same, about the same. I, I, I mean, I, I usually got to get somewhere. So I usually kind of want to leave the throne. And they, they didn't like this answer, so uh, I guess they I guess they thought the throne room was insufficiently um, I don't know what's the word royal yeah like like you didn't feel you didn't feel the power of the throne room so uh, it makes sense they put it in a whole different place you don't often go into so I get that so okay so Colby's going in and they're practicing I like how Colby's studying. It's very nice. So he's doing the top, uh, top 100 IMDb moves and just going down the list. You know, that's a great way to study. It really is. It's just, uh, I mean, yeah, if you know anything about heart, totally the right way to go. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Col Colby just has, just, just, he knows how to study. <laughs> like, kids, want to how to study. Colby needs to make a collection of study courses. Yes, he needs a collection of study courses that tell you how to study. I, I really hope Colby is in season four. I'd really enjoy fighting him. I'd be, cons well, I mean, I would always have him around talking to him. I'm a little concerned I would lose in a, in, a, in a competition against him, but he'd be good to have. He's a nice character, and I don't know, he's, he's formidable. All right. So I love the production values for this nerd off where they like smash the zombies. I wish there was like a way to like convey like the squishiness or like something like that. I know they kind of try where they like, you know, they hit him and he kind of, you know, that kind of thing. But I didn't really quite fully feel it. And it would have been nice if, if, if you could feel it. Like, because I mean, because I, I, I bet they were pleasant. I, I bet they really were. I bet they were like really fun to like wall up into or like smack. And, um. But you know, but we you know we can't feel it. We can't feel it. So that's that. That's so sad. So sad. Actually, oh no! I know how they should have done it. They should have done it with like those Mortal Kombat style, um, you know, like in Mortal Kombat. They do the X-ray hits, like 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 you punch it, or like there's some big move and it shows and it goes to an X-ray of the victim and it goes. Now that, that, that like we usually with a bone breaking or something, that would have been really nice. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to that below if you haven't seen that before. Um, note for producers, use these. So, okay. So here's some things. Okay, so here's the first thing. So, first of all, I don't understand why they're artificially adding randomness into this nerd off. I was always under the impression that nerd offs were supposed to be um, and relatively cl clear cut. And I don't understand why adding randomness to it's a good idea. So, I mean, I understand that you want to smash zombies. So, okay, I mean... I get that. But why not just do it like they did for like the first nerd off where you smash down buildings. You just replace the building with zombies and you know, and basically like the number of, the number of um, swings you get is basically your points. Okay, so if you get a hard question, you need to knock down, you know, three buildings, you need to knock down three zombies, something like that. I don't understand why they're putting these cards inside the zombies and you retrieve them for points. I just, I don't understand why they're adding that randomness. Just don't get it. I would, I would love if someone from production would respond. I would, I would like to know why, and why would you artificially add randomness to it? When I mean, I don't understand why randomness is considered a, a desirable thing in this in this particular instance. I know in some cases you might want it, but I don't get it here. So, secondly, I also don't understand uh, also the points. I don't understand why they're scored 100, 200, and 300. Why not just make them one, two, and three? <laughs> just. I, you know, I mean, unless you're gonna like subdivide into the points, like why, 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 why multi, why make them big? I, I think one million, two million, and three million. <laughs> well, why not do that? 
And just, I, I don't know. I, I, I know a lot of shows do this. I never really understood why they do that. I, I always thought it was kind of dumb. So, whatever. Whatever. So, I would have done terrible in this challenge. The only one I knew in there was Freaks. That was the only one I knew. So, I thought it was kind of surprising about the, uh, the Army of Darkness one. It was something about the Fancy Pants something. Like, uh, I mean, I've seen Army of Darkness, and I just didn't know it. <laughs> just like, uh, and so, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm really curious if the nerd-off was actually that close, where they only won by 100 points. I know sometimes they like to modify the nerd-off so that they're not quite as, so that they look closer than they actually were. And uh, it just seems surprising to me it would be that close. It just seems surprising. Uh, I don't know, just, yeah, it's because, um, yeah, just, it just seems like, I mean, like, like Amanda should have crushed Colby, like, totally. Okay. All right, so that's what we got here. So, uh, oh, there's a wonderful fine quote by Colby that I loved. This is a quote. You have sent in your most trusted knight, and you have vanquished the dragon. Kudos. Oh, my God. Colby is so fucking dignified. Like, Colby, you are a gentleman and a scholar. You really are. Yes. So, yeah, okay, I, I think I'm done with my Colby crush. Uh, but so it's, it's sad to see him go. Um, yeah, it's sad. It's sad. So, okay. So, predictions going forward. I still like Ben and, ben and, ben and Rochelle, most just because there's just been so little about them. I mean, they've been the characters most under the radar this whole time. So, you know, under the radar characters are more likely to succeed just because you have to devote the final episodes to them. So... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I think. People ask me why don't why don't I say Caitlyn? Caitlyn's been. I mean, don't get me. I mean, Caitlyn does have wonderful lines, and I guess that might be a reason why she's being featured. But I mean, she's just too polarizing. She's too polarizing, and uh... yeah, I mean, she's the one everyone's fearful of. It's just. I don't know. I mean, you never want it to be where you're the person that people... Well, okay, I guess if you're in the individual stage, maybe it doesn't matter anymore. If you're in the individual stage, it maybe it doesn't matter. That's interesting. I still don't like it, though. I still don't like it because even if Caitlin gets to the very end, they're going to have something like the Nerd Eliminator at the end. And I'm not sure Caitlin can acquire the fan base she needs to win the Nerd Eliminator. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It, like, in terms of, like, like my, my, my favorite person, I mean, my favorite person on the show right now is, is hands down, Caitlin. But, I mean, I don't think she's going to win. So. That's the way it is. Do you think more really more to add? Hmm. No, not this time. I'll have more later. Peace.